This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream in partnership with my streaming service Nebula. Hey, happy Friday. This week, Google Pixel sales hit a brand new record, and I'm happy to say that I have some exclusive figures that I can share with you. There is a weird new laptop completely without ports, and Apple also smashed basically the entire ad industry, and especially Facebook. I'm afraid this week we didn't have time for a tech knowledge quiz. We had to focus on some other projects, but we'll be back with that next week, and welcome to the Friday Checkout. Okay, my release highlights this week start with a 500 hertz PC monitor prototype from Chinese display maker BOE, which is the fastest panel ever. Do we need 500 hertz on a monitor? Probably not, but that is still pretty impressive. MIUI 13 also launched officially this past week, rolling out to everything from the Mi 11 Ultra to the Xiaomi Pad 5. Apple's Beats Fit Pro came to more countries than just the US as the workout ready AirPods Pro alternative, and Peloton released a $90 heart rate monitor that you wear on your forearm while working out on a Peloton machine. To see all of the new releases of the week, check out the release monitor in the Crowd app that is linked down in the description. Okay, my first story of the week is going to be Google suspiciously talking up the sales figures of the Pixel 6 series. On the earnings call, CEO Sundar Pichai described the Pixel 6 as a commercial success and said that, quote, in Q4 we set an all-time quarterly sales record for Pixel. This came in spite of an extremely challenging supply chain environment. The response to Pixel 6 from our customers and carrier partners was incredibly positive. That is interesting because in the past Sundar has barely even mentioned Pixel phones in earnings calls, and with Google putting real effort into the Pixel 6 this year, I thought maybe that has changed. Without Google releasing any concrete data, a lot of tech media has kind of just assumed that the jump must have been huge, but I wanted to know exactly how huge, so I went and asked CounterPoint Research. They were incredibly nice and they shared some exclusive data with me. Thank you very much. So here's what I got. Sales for Google increased 63% quarter on quarter, which just doesn't say a whole lot as the Pixel 6 launched in Q4, but sales also increased 7% year on year in the fourth quarter, with December in particular increasing by 14%, which gives us a better comparison to the Pixel 5, which also launched in Q4. Counterpoint also confirmed that sales in December 2021 were the highest since December 2019, and they added that, quote, initially, sales were somewhat held back by shortages, but as supply improved, sales also improved through Q4. But as supply improved, sales also improved through Q4, as the Pixel 6 is just a more competitive phone that they pushed harder. So the predictions that this was somehow a huge category-defining leap, I think those are not exactly correct, but a 7 to maybe 14% increase in sales, especially for a device that is much more expensive than the one that came out last year, is not bad, and at least it shows that Google Google is in fact trying. I also saw yesterday that the Pixel 6 series is now on sale in Spain and Italy, which means it is now available in 11 global territories, which is progress, I guess, but still pretty limited when Apple and Samsung sell in like 200 countries or something. Well, baby steps, I guess. Okay, my second story of the week will be a short one with a possible glimpse at a future that I think almost nobody wants. It is a laptop out of a new and unknown company called Crayob. It has a 13.3 inch 4K screen, an Intel 12th generation Alder Lake P-Series mobile CPU, and loads of RAM while still being super thin at just 7 millimeters, and super light at well under one kilo. The only problem? It has no ports, not a single one. Not even a charging port, no USB-C, no headphone jack, no HDMI. Oh boy. The laptop will have to make do with a proprietary wireless charger that attaches to the laptop's lid, possibly similarly to Apple's MagSafe tech on iPhones, and that charger thingy then contains a variety of ports like USB-C, a headphone jack, and an SD card slot. That is cool, I guess, and the laptop is also like 45% lighter than even a Dell XPS 13 Plus and half as thick, but I'm not sure that anything below one kilo makes that much of a difference anymore. The Crayob X doesn't have pricing or availability beyond a coming soon tagline on their website, and I assume that that's kind of a warning for a portless future for all of us to fear. Of course, this is a sort of Kickstarter brand, so there's absolutely no guarantee that the product will ever actually make it to market, but still, I was kind of expecting smartphones to be the first devices to come out without ports, and it looks like maybe it will be laptops instead. Okay, and my third story of the week is going to be Apple coming in with a massive wrecking ball and just crushing a bunch of ad companies and especially Facebook. 
So back when Apple introduced additional privacy controls on iPhone, it required apps to ask users for permission before tracking them across other apps and websites. We knew that that would hurt advertising companies like Facebook, but this week we figured out just how much, and things are not looking pretty. Facebook's Sheryl Sandberg said in their earnings reports that, quote, like others in our industry, we have faced headwinds as a result of Apple's iOS changes. As we described last quarter, Apple created two challenges for advertisers. One is that the accuracy of our ads targeting decreased, which increased the cost of driving outcomes. The other is that measuring those outcomes became more difficult. Those are exactly the two things that marketers are complaining about. Facebook said that in 2022 alone, the impact of the iOS privacy update is in the order of 10 billion dollars which is part of the reason why facebook's stock crashed at an insane 26 percent in value that's a quarter of the company's value gone poof overnight other ad companies like snapchat pinterest and twitter initially had massive crashes too though some of those have bounced back already but facebook did not because not only were they impacted more heavily but on top of that they also saw declining daily user numbers for the first time after more than a decade decade of endless growth, and their escape plan of building a VR empire is also turning out to be even more expensive than expected. Zuckerberg has always been paranoid about relying on other companies for their business, and it's pretty clear to see that he was correct in his fears, but it is much less clear whether him building VR headsets and selling those at a loss will actually help them create a real alternative platform of their own on a scale that matters. Zuckerberg's net worth dropped by an insane $29 billion after the earnings came out, which is among the largest drops in personal wealth in history, and the winners of this apocalypse seem to be Google and Apple's own ad network, which advertisers seem to be fleeing to. Apple predictably had its advertising revenue share skyrocket on iOS especially since the ban, and Google's earnings this week showed that everything is just fine over there too. Their search engine revenue alone has increased by 35% as that relies more on keywords than the behavioral targeting that Apple has made so difficult, and since Google never had a super dominant position in iOS advertising, and instead had a more diversified approach across networks and platforms, the impact on them was much smaller. I truly believe that a better internet that isn't full of nasty tracking and advertising everywhere has to exist, even if Apple's approach is quite self-serving. And that is a big reason why I got together with some of YouTube's smartest educational creators and created Nebula. Nebula is our very own video streaming platform. It is beautiful and runs on almost any device with no ads, no nasty tracking, and lots of exclusive videos like my Nebula original series, Technorama, or five Nebula Plus segments that I've made for the platform so far, as well as videos from hundreds of educational YouTubers like Real Engineering, Renee Ritchie, Polymatter, Low Spec Gamer, me, of course, and more. The best way to get Nebula is through our Curiosity Stream bundle that gives you access to both platforms for a little more than just one dollar a month and by signing up you not only join us in creating a better internet but you also get access to great curiosity stream documentaries like digits by fellow youtuber derek from veritasium where he speaks with people like edward snowden about connecting the future check out the bundle below let me know how you like technorama and i'll see you in the next episode